Hey everybody, Steve here. Welcome to the video. I'm glad that you found this one because I'm going to try to put together one of the most comprehensive how to buy a drone videos on all of YouTube. Uh, I have been buying, building, flying, crashing, and rebuilding quads since 2012. So I got a pretty good handle on things. I have flown everything from teeny weeny little itty bitty micro quads all the way up to a huge, I think it's 1100 millimeter wingspan octocopter uh, that I used in a movie a few years ago. Okay, so the first thing that I want to acknowledge is the fact that I completely understand how intimidating and how daunting it is to try to start getting into this hobby. There are so many options to choose from. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to break it down for you. I'm actually going to draw a line right down the middle. 50% of the drones are going to appeal to a certain percentage of the audience and the other 50% of the drones are going to appeal to a different audience. All we need to do is determine where you fall and we've already narrowed the type of drone that you're going to buy down into half. The drone world can be cut in half as far as I'm concerned. So take a listen and do a self-evaluation and see where you fall. On the right, we have what I'm going to label as a consumer drone. And on the left, we are going to have what I label as a hobbyist drone. Let's take a look at the consumer drone first. Now this is a DJI drone. Um, it is in the middle of the DJI line of drones. It's got a very nice camera with a very nice gimbal. This camera floats on a three axis gimbal, which basically gives you silky smooth video, but forget that for right now. What's important here is that you can go to Best Buy or Amazon or wherever, and you can buy this drone and within two hours of getting home with it, you can be up flying. And that two hours is solely based on how long it takes you to charge the batteries. This thing has got GPS. These are collision avoidance sensors on the front, on the bottom, on the back. And that's not as important of, as the fact that this thing will lock on with, I don't know, I've seen as many as 15, 16 satellites, maybe even more. So once it gets a satellite lock, the GPS will allow you to basically take your hands off the control and this thing will just sit in the air. Even in 20 mile an hour wind gusts, this thing will just sit and float in the air. It won't do anything. The bottom line is that this is easy to fly. You could buy this and be flying it inside of a couple of hours. Now, you're going to need practice and I don't recommend you do any kind of crazy aerial acrobatics or anything like that. But if you just want to buy something and fly something, a consumer drone is the way to go. But it does have its drawbacks. All right, so on the other side of the line is this baby right here. This is what I'm going to label as a hobbyist drone. It did not come like this. And for those of you who are in the know, I know this is an old drone. Uh, my newest one is crashed and in lots of pieces and unavailable for this video. So I just pulled an old one. But anyhow, this thing did not look like this when I first got it. As a matter of fact, the propellers, the motors, these are called speed controllers or ESCs. Any, everything that you see here came in its own little box and this thing was built from scratch. If you are a beginner, you are not going to be able to get one of these, bring it home and be flying in two hours. Uh, the learning curve on one of these is dramatically steeper than it is on a consumer drone. Uh, this is intended for a completely different audience. This thing is geared for somebody who wants to make a commitment and get into a hobby. Somebody who wants to put in time to learn how to do this. And I'm going to tell you right now that this hobby requires a tremendous number of skill sets. You've got to be able to build. So for example, you've got to learn how to solder. You've got to be fairly decent with software because there is a significant amount of configuring that this thing will need to be able to fly correctly. And then you got to learn how to fly and flying a drone without GPS is significantly more difficult than say flying a consumer drone. So you've got to ask yourself, do I want a hobby? or do I just want to fly? Okay, so now that formal introductions have been made, let's start dissecting these things down a little bit more. Starting with this guy right here. 
All right, so taking a closer look at the people who fell on the 50% line of this drone, I'm gonna further break down this group into three groups. Number one, people who buy this thing just to fly. They just wanna have fun. Maybe they're buying it for a kid or whatever, and they just want to experience the exhilaration of the fun of flying, okay? That's number one. Uh, number two are either photographers slash videographers or aspiring photographers slash videographers who want to get absolutely killer aerial photography and videography out of this camera, which is sitting, it's basically floating on something called a gimbal. It's a three axis gimbal. And what that means is, is if this thing shakes, the gimbal is going to keep the camera perfectly still. So you get those super sexy, silky, shots that you probably see everywhere on the internet. So photographers slash videographers want to take advantage of the great camera and the super unbelievable range that this thing has, which we'll talk about later because I don't want to get into specs right now. The third group is going to be the combination of those two. People who want to take unbelievable footage and people who want to use it just to have fun. Here's what I see as a drawback for this drone. But I think that if you're buying this thing just to fly and the, the, the videography photography thing is not for you, if you're part of that third that's just buying this thing for fun, I think it is safe to say, okay, if, if you fly it on a regular basis, I personally think you're going to get bored. Um, that is what I see as the drawback on this one right here. I will always use this one for taking amazing footage. And if I'm going to the beach or the mountains or whatever, and I want amazing footage, I'm taking this one. This one is much more of a steady workhorse. By way of comparison, this thing right here is an endless sea of challenges. Just when you think you've got it down, there are new challenges. There are new things to learn. This thing is hands down uh, probably one of the most challenging hobbies I've ever tried to take on in my entire life. Uh, as if building's not hard enough and configuring's not hard enough and flying's not hard enough, it's challenging. So as I mentioned, I've been flying for many, many years and I was flying what we call line of sight, which means that you can see the drone up in the air. You're actually watching it with your eyes up in the air. And it wasn't until fairly recently that I got into this thing called FPV, which is called first person view, which means there's a little camera on the drone and there's a little transmitter on the drone that transmits the camera signal back to me. And I'm wearing these goggles right here and essentially when I'm looking in the goggles, I'm actually seeing what this camera's seeing. So if this thing's 30 feet up in the air, flying at 25 miles per hour, um, I'm seeing it like I'm sitting right here on the drone, first person view. Um, wow, what an exhilarating, unbelievable experience. About a million times more fun than the consumer drone. Now I will say this, the consumer drone has a camera on it and the consumer drone's camera will send a feed up to your cell phone and the feed is freaking amazing. It's gorgeous. It's, this thing will go for kilometers and kilometers and I'm not going to bust out specs because it's not, it's not where I'm at right now with the, in this video. But like I said, this thing is utilitarian. This thing's for capturing awesome footage. This thing right here is for just balls to the walls fun. Not even full I mean, I don't know how else to put it. This thing is incredibly fun and it's infinitely challenging. There's always new things that you can do to challenge yourself. All right, so I'm gonna hit you with uh, some really, really good news. Regardless of which direction you decide to go, whether it be the hobby side or the consumer side, this needs to be your first drone. This is a $30 drone. As a matter of fact, it's 60 bucks, but it comes with three batteries. The battery is about $10 a piece. So this is a cheap plastic DJI knockoff, okay? Uh, just so that you get a feeling for the size. This thing is super small, super cute, folds up just like the DJI one. You can actually put it in here. You can actually put it in the breast pocket of a shirt. Uh, thing is amazing. Folds up. Here's the deal on this thing. You can fly this thing indoors and you can crash it into just about everything that you could possibly think of, um, except for the dog or the cat. Don't, don't do that. And try to, try to avoid the TV too. Um, so maybe I had to caveat that by saying, be careful when flying inside, but you can fly this baby inside and it will hit the wall and it will hit the floor and it will, it will just get right back up and fly. 
point being, this is an unbelievably cheap way of learning how to fly. This thing has the same flight characteristics uh, in terms of stick movements as the other two drones. Now there's no GPS or anything like that, so it's a little harder to fly than the uh, DJI, but that's a good thing. Um, you need to learn how to fly. You need to learn how to fly. You can't be flying. Uh, you can't be flying with the training wheels on all times. So amazing, amazing thing. I will leave a link in the description for where you can get one of these things. So what do you do if you want to buy a consumer drone? You've bought this one, you've outgrown it, and you're like, okay, time to move up. Well, guess what? For $399, you can get the DJI Mavic Mini. Okay, this Mavic Mini kind of a comparison thing and then this is I need more real estate let's go ahead and do this all right get a feel you have to ignore my wires and stuff all right so we've already talked about this guy he's out of the picture all right um, this is a Mavic Mini a DJI Mavic Mini it has got a camera on it and I'm gonna go ahead and tell you right now the Mavic Mini for $399 takes amazing footage here's some footage here that uh, my son shot uh, within 24 hours of getting the Mavic Mini and the camera is it's awesome it is absolutely freaking amazing for a non-professional all right you could take this thing on vacation and get killer 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 footage uh, that will be the envy of your friends and relatives all for the amazing low price of $399 I remember when I was flying my humongous drones uh, back in the day when the GoPro alone my Hero 3, the GoPro alone costs $399, let alone I had another three grand in the drones. Uh, and this thing takes better footage than my $3,500 rig with a GoPro 3 on it that I was using back in 2015. And this thing fits in my shirt pocket. Take a look at how big my hexacopter here is. And this thing freaking beats it, all right? So um, I'll go ahead, I, I don't, off the top of my head, I'll, I'll go ahead and put what the, the specs are for the camera on this thing. This thing is GPS satellite. It has, it flies just like its big brother. Uh, it struggles in the wind uh, much more than its big brother. And I'm going to tell you something that I've never heard anybody else say on YouTube. You got to be careful with this thing because when my son's flying, I don't know what kind of birds they are. I don't know whether they're hawks or crows or what, but they attack this thing like nobody's business. So you are, you run a greater likelihood of getting attacked by a bird and crashing this thing than you will crash this thing because you're a poor flyer. Once again, GPS, the same app, same everything uh, regarding its bigger brother. So $399 on Unbelievable. This baby right here is $899, $899. Uh, it shoots, I think, 2.7. I'll, I'll, I'll include the spec. I'll include the spec here on the screen. Just like the little brother, it's got a three axis gimbal. Amazing, just, just jaw dropping, amazing footage out of this half inch sensor. I think it's 2.7K. Um, wow, wow, wow. This thing is all a regular person would ever need to shoot footage, to have fun. This is such a, such a fun drone. And uh, this is the Mavic Air 2. Highly recommend the Av Mavic Air 2. Now, something I don't have um, that you can jump up to, it looks very similar to this, is the Mavic Pro 2, I believe. Uh, the Mavic Pro has a full one inch sensor. So it's twice as much as this one. I think it's somewhere in the neighborhood of 1900 or something like that. But $1,900 for a one inch sensor camera that for a drone that will go several kilometers and it's still only this big. I mean, this thing, this thing is amazing. I'm gonna go ahead and give you kind of a size comparison. There's, there's the, there's the uh, Mav Air 2. That is, that's a Galaxy S9. That's the Mav Mini, and that's the introductory one. So why am I only talking about DJI drones? Well, I'll tell you why. When I bought my first consumer drone, I was trying very, very hard to not jump on the DJI bandwagon. So I bought the Autel Evo 2, which was much more in lines of the Mavic uh, Pro 2. It had a 4K camera on it and it took amazing footage, but 
the flight characteristics were so bad. Now, keep in mind, I bought it when it first came out. I got one of the original, original batches, and I, I don't know whether they've done a firmware update to fix this or not, but that thing turned like a school bus. I don't even know how to describe it to you. The Altel Evo basically would yaw and slide, and that's all it did. It, to try to get it to yaw and roll at the same time was nearly impossible because it wanted to self-write itself so badly. So I didn't try to be a DJI fanboy. Um, as a matter of fact, I tried to avoid it, but you know what? These things are just so damn good. Uh, I had to I had to dive into the DJI ecosystem and here I am and um, I don't know I, I don't know whether I could say I'm a big fan or not but they just fly so freaking good uh, it's it's hard to hate them okay it's just hard to hate them all right so that is the consumer side of things let's take a look at the, let's take a look closer look at the hobbyist side of things all right so if you have decided that you're on the hobby side of things but you're very very nervous about uh, uh, building them, then I've got some good news for you because they come in three different flavors. Flavor number one is something called RTF, which is ready to fly. This is a ready to fly drone. And if I can get the box out of the way, check this out. In one box, you get a fully built drone, okay? And you get the radio to go with it, okay? And basically what you do is you charge all the batteries and uh, logic would dictate that you would be able to just start flying. Now, I will say this, um, I've never bought one of these. This one is on loan to me from a friend. Uh, it's never been flown and it is just an example that I wanted to give you of a RTF or ready to fly drone. All right, let's take a look at the next step uh, as it pertains to these hobbyist drones. We, we talked about um, ready to fly or RTFs. And if you take a look at this little Emax Tiny Hawk 2, this you're gonna see marketed as either BNF, which is bind and fly, or ARTF, which is almost ready to fly, okay? So BNF or almost ready to fly. And the reason for that is because you saw the packaging right here. That's all you get when you buy it. It's assuming that you already have a radio. Um, this already has the little receiver on it that is going to talk to this radio transmitter. So it, it ships with the receiver, but it does not ship with the transmitter. You need to buy your own transmitter. And, and if you're serious about getting into this hobby and you're gonna buy a nice transmitter, there really is no substitute for this Radio Master TX-16S. Uh, be on the lookout for a multi-part series on this radio alone, that's how much I love this radio. So anyhow, so that's bind and fly. Bind and fly means you're just buying the drone alone. Now this guy's little and cute and everything like that, but there are BNFs for, um, you know, five inch quads, six inch quads and stuff like that as well. Um, meaning the bigger ones, like this is six inch right there. All right, so BNF, bind and fly. You know, once you get in this hobby and you get a radio, uh, and if you buy a multi-protocol radio like this TX16S by Radio Master or a Jumper T16 or Jumper T18, multi-protocol radios are the only way to go because they'll be able to fly lots of different quads from lots of different manufacturers. Don't fall into the trap of getting sucked into one manufacturer's ecosystem, like for example, FR Sky. If you buy FR Sky nowadays, uh, you will most likely not be able to bind to this guy right here. This, this right here is a multi-protocol radio and will bind to many, many, many different radios. I've got a video on that as well and I'll link to it in the description. Okay, so this is the moment that I've been waiting for. This is my absolute favorite kind of build, which is a scratch build. And there's a lot of parts here and this is pretty intimidating and this is the hardest way to go. But I'm gonna tell you right now, it is the single most rewarding way to fly. When you build it from scratch and it gets up there in the air, it's just amazing. So let's dive in. You're gonna need a frame. Not all frames are alike. Uh, don't settle for one of the little cheapo cheapo ones that are 11 bucks because you'll get all kinds of problems like uh, you won't get all the hardware that you need sometimes and the, sometimes the circles don't line up with each other and you're basically wasted a bunch of money. So there's a frame, I got four motors here. Uh, motors come in clockwise and counterclockwise, so make sure that you get the right kind. All right, let's talk about the single most important part of the whole thing, which is the brain. This is a Kukute F7 uh, flight controller. This is the brain of the system. 
and uh, this flight controller is going to receive information from this. This is the radio receiver. Uh, obviously you have the radio transmitter in your hand and you move the sticks. This is what uh, gets those inputs and this talks directly to the brain. Okay. And then the brain basically tells these, which are electronic speed controls or ESCs. There is one ESC for each motor and the flight controller tells the ESCs to tell the motors how fast to spin. And that's essentially how it flies. Now I'm going to get into some of the variables uh, and I'm not going to go into details because I am going to do in-depth videos uh, on this F7 build later. This is a power distribution board that you may or may not use depending on what kind of flight controller you have. Obviously we're going to need propellers. All right, here we have the FPV camera right here. This is the radio transmitter that transmits the images from our camera back down to the goggles that we will be wearing on our head. So there's that. And then there's a lot of different variations. So that's not an exhaustive list of everything that you need to be able to fly. I will cover that in another video. Uh, what I will do is I will leave an exhaustive list on everything that you need to fly in the description below so that you can purchase uh, straight from a list of uh, tried and true products that I use. You probably remember that I mentioned that you need four ESCs or electronic speed controllers, one for each motor. Um, but in recent years, they've come up with a four in one ESC, which looks like this. So definitely subscribe to the channel because I got two F7 builds coming down the road. One is going to be an F7 build with the four ESCs. And then the other one is going to be uh, one with a four in one ESC build. So I'm excited about building both of those. And that's about as much detail as I wanted to go into right here. Definitely check back later because way more on that. All right, so what'd you think? Hopefully I was able to dissect it in a way to where you were able to eliminate half the drone market uh, based on whether or not you're a consumer person or a hobbyist person. And then of course my intent was to further break down each 50% category down even further to help you decide where you fall and what drone makes the most sense for you to purchase. This one wins in the fun category, hands down. This one wins in the productivity category, hands down. All right, so I'm gonna wrap it up here because I'm starting to repeat myself. Uh, I'm Steve, I hope you found value in the video. And if you like the videos, please feel free to share them so that I get more than three views on, my, uh, on, on all my drone videos. But lots and lots more to come. Uh, I'm getting ready to do a multi-part series on this baby right here. Um, this radio, absolutely astoundingly amazing. So that's coming down the road. I'm gonna do the F7 build. I've got, man, I've got ideas for dozens and dozens and dozens of drone videos. So they will all be forthcoming. So please subscribe, hit the bell, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.